Hello, my front porch friends. Oh, it is so good to see you tonight. Thank you for hearing the call. It's not really a call from me. This is a call, I believe, from heaven, calling us as intercessors to pray. And you know what? It is a privilege to say yes to the call. So tonight, I know some of you are watching uh, in your house. You're just sitting there with the phone or the computer. Uh, just good to see you and have you join us. Get into a place where you can pray all by yourself without anybody disturbing you, okay? Also, some of you I know are meeting in groups, and I'm just so glad we've come together. It just feels like the church all over the world. You know, we, we, the front porch friends are scattered, really, in many nations. We have front porch friends tonight that are praying with us from Ireland. They've messaged me from South Africa. We have them pray with us from England and from uh, New Zealand. They're, they're praying in many, many nations, and of course, from all over right here in America. But it's very important that you sort of man your post because, my dear friend, you matter to your city, to your nation, and especially to your family tonight because we are about to pray for all of them. Now, I want to first welcome, of course, to uh, uh, the porch, uh, those of that were able to be here in person. I have my front porch. We call them the prayer force here at the ramp. Y'all wave it, wave at the ladies. You can just look right down there and just wave at them. So my mother, my mother's here on the swing and Miss Pam Barnett and all of those that you're already pretty familiar with, they're here to pray, pray with you too. So they're going to stand in firm agreement with us. Now, Let's get started because I want to tell you, first of all, sort of what stirred this event to even happen. So uh, it was about a week, not even a week ago, it was over the past weekend, uh, a spiritual son of mine, Chase, came to me with a dream that I knew when I heard the dream was a word from the Lord. And the dream so stirred me. In fact, if you haven't heard me share about this dream, I shared about it on the post that I uh, sent out. This past Wednesday night, it's called Meet Me on Prayer Mountain. And it's on that post, the most recent one, Meet Me on Prayer Mountain, that I share the fullness of this dream and explain what I believe to be the word of the Lord to us. And I, if you haven't seen it yet, let me strongly encourage you to go back after we get through praying tonight, maybe tomorrow, and watch that particular post in its entirety. That'll get us all on the same page with what we're hearing. But as, and when I heard it, I knew that the Lord was telling us as his children, as his intercessors, that a storm is coming. In fact, not only is the storm coming, but according to the word that we've heard, the storm is already here. In fact, in this dream, the Lord said, quote, another wave is coming. Now, we didn't make it clear what that wave was exactly, but we know this according to what the Word said, that it was going to be, result in a lot of fear and anxiety. But how sweet of the Lord, not only to tell us what was coming, but also the Lord telling us what we needed to know and what we needed to do about it. Here's what He told us. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't hear this right now and get filled with fear. No, the uh, very opposite. Don't let your heart be troubled. But also he said, guard your heart. Yeah. Now stay with me. I'm going to take about three or four more minutes before we start praying to explain to you why tonight is so important. The dream that Chase had was also set on what we know as prayer mountain. So I knew that the dream was also a word that was calling us to prayer. It's calling you and me to a place of prayer. In fact, to a place of prayer that what Jesus calls being fully given in prayer. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to give ourselves fully in the place of prayer. Y'all just pray for the technical part of this too. So nothing can hinder it in Jesus name. I find it interesting, my front porch friend, that really over the past probably two and a half hours here in Hamilton, We've been having severe storms, like severe storm warnings 
it's been thundering, lightning, pouring rain. So if you're seeing technical stuff, I just thought, now, isn't that something? Right when the front porch friends are gathering to pray, a physical storm manifests around us. You know what we're going to do? What Jesus said, not be troubled. We're going to be at peace and we're going to pray. So he said, be fully given in prayer. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Where he is calling us in with a sense of urgency to pray and to pray now. Why? Because our nations, our families are all being affected by this storm. Now, this is important. Now, you've got to understand this so that when we start praying just a minute or two, you'll understand your role and why this matters. Why is this storm here? How did it get here? What, what is this about? When a nation or a city turns from God, judgment or death is its result. That's why Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. It's the law of God. It's the, listen to me, everybody focus in. It is the law of God. The wages, sin has a cost, whether it's to a person or to a city or to a nation. Sin has a cost and the cost of sin is death. I'm glad it doesn't end there though because the rest of the verse says, but the gift of God. Hallelujah. Is eternal life. Only one way, only one way through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Jesus came first to be our great intercessor. Then he ascended to go back to be with his father after he did his part, to become a great intercessor, interceding with, we're not just interceding by ourselves tonight. We've got the Holy Spirit on the porch with us. You've got the Holy Spirit in the living room with you. Come on, you right where you are. We're not praying by ourselves. The Spirit of God is with us on this porch and Jesus, the great intercessor, is interceding with us tonight to the Father on our behalf. Hallelujah. That sounds like a winning team if I've ever heard one. Glory to God. So tonight, when Jesus came, became his intercessor, our intercessor, he left. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, 18th verse tells us now, after he did his part that only he could do, he's given us the task of reconciling people now to, the, to Jesus. Now then, we have become the ambassadors on earth. This generation is our responsibility. This is ours. We are the intercessors now on the earth, interceding to Jesus in heaven. We are standing on this porch tonight, and you are with us in the spirit. I don't care where you're watching this from. We are on this porch of intercession. Here we are, front porch friends. We are standing between the cold, dark, sinful world that's lost and confused and afraid tonight. But we, this porch stands between the dark world and the warmth and light and love of our Father's house. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So tonight, we're going to go right now. Before the very throne of God, the one who is a present help, in the time of trouble. Yes. Come on. Some of you are in trouble tonight. Your marriage is in trouble. Your children are in trouble. Your body is in trouble. He is a present help. We're going to walk boldly before the very throne of God so that we can find grace to help us in the time of need. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get ready. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to say this too in Matthew 18, 19. One more thing. The Bible says there if two agree on earth as touching anything we ask, it will be done for us by our Father which is in heaven. Oh, honey, agreement is so powerful. So that's why tonight I want to ask you, wherever you're watching this from, to engage with us. Just Don't just watch. I'm glad you're watching. Don't just watch. We need your faith. If two agree, you, that's me, us, come on. We're going to pray not as two. We're going to pray as one. That's what agreement means. It means coming together as one. What we pray about tonight, we're going to pray about it as one. Ah, hallelujah. That's what makes it powerful. Two people or more praying about the same thing, targeted prayer over the same thing at the same time becomes powerful. So I want you to be very intentional as you're praying tonight. 
when you're praying in a group setting like we are right now from all over the world, I want to ask you to do this. Intentional focus the whole time as we are about to walk in the throne room. Stay very focused. If I'm leading in prayer, I want to ask you to do this. Either pray with me about the exact same thing I'm praying about. So if I'm praying about a particular thing, you at home on the porch, y'all pray about the exact same thing at the exact, the exact same time. That's being one in prayer. You may just want to repeat what I'm saying. That's okay. If you hear me pray, you can just say it right after me so that we become one in prayer, praying over the same thing. Yeah. Then he said this, two agreeing with others touching anything they ask, anything they ask according yes, to his will. Remember, come on, 1 John 5, 14. This yeah. is our confidence. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Right. We know that if he hears us, we can have whatever we ask. Come on. You ready? Let's get started. Tonight, we're positioning ourselves right now. We're going to position ourselves with focus. We're going to position our focus, position our hearts, and position our faith. So right now, first of all, let's position our focus. Eyes up. Come on, eyes up. Wherever you are watching, come on, eyes up. Start looking up. Come on, turn your eyes up on Jesus and look full on his wonderful face. Eyes up away from all the things of this world till they grow so strangely dim. Eyes up. Eyes up. Come on, leaving all the stuff you're dealing with right now behind you. Ascending to your place, seated at the seated in the heavenly places right there. Eyes up. Eyes up on Jesus. Come on, let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Thankful unto him, we bless his name. Come on, honey. Join with me right now. Lift up your hands with us. Come on. Right where you are on the couch, wherever you're watching, lift up your hands. Jesus, we love you. Here we are, God. Here we are. Here we are, God, your front porch friends from all over the world. Here we are, God. Hear our voices tonight. Your intercessors, your front porch friends, we're standing on your porch, weeping between porch and altar. Here we are tonight, God. We are here to worship you. We are here to thank you. We know that you hear us. We know that your ears are open to the cry of your children. So we glorify your name. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving, your courts with praise. Y'all, let's just thank him right now. Let's thank him for his unfailing love. Come on, y'all. Thank him right now for who he is. Because you're real, we thank you. Because you're the only God that ever has been, is now, and ever will be. <laughs> you're the only God. And you are our God. Thank you for Jesus that made a way that we can reach you. Come on, y'all. Thank him for Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that's with us. You didn't leave us by ourselves, Lord. Thank you. You sent the Comforter to help us till you come. Thank you for the Spirit of God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Thank Ghost. Jesus. Thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you for your unfailing mercy. Come on, we worship you. Right where you are, honey. That's right. You just worship him with me. Thank you. Don't you just love it? We're standing before the throne of God. We thank you, Lord, that you are right here near us. Thank you for giving us access. Thank you, God. We love you. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you glory. I want us right now to begin to exalt his name. Come on. Exalt the name. Jesus. That's right. Come on. Say it out loud. Jesus, the name above every name. Come on. Say his name above everything that's going on in your life. Come on. Put, put his name above your house right now. Put his name above everything in your life. Put his name above your marriage, above your children. His name is exalted. Oh, I give you praise, Father. Philippians 2, 9 says God has given you a name above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Every tongue confesses Jesus. You are Lord. Your name is high, higher than cancer. Come on. Higher than fear. Come on. Higher than diabetes. Oh, thank you, God. Higher, higher, higher than multiple sclerosis. Higher, higher, higher. Your name is higher. Your name is above it all. Come on, whatever sickness, whatever sickness you can name, his name is above it. Come on, whatever enemy you're facing, his name is above it. 
We say right now, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise over our homes. Let your enemies, God, be scattered. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your name is exalted. We declare your blood and we declare your victory. We praise you, Jesus. Come on, let's just praise him for his blood. Let's thank him. Thank you, Jesus, that Colossians 2.15, it says that you have spoiled powers and principalities and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in Your blood is stronger, stronger, and your victory is sure. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, for your great victory because of the power of your blood. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Honey, just tell him, thank you for your blood that's given me victory. Thank you for your name, exalted above it all. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Your front porch friends are here, washed in your blood. Here we are. We couldn't stand here if it wasn't for your blood. There's nothing we've done that could ever let us stand here. Thank you. Thank you. We stand in your name and in your blood to make our petition, Lord. We thank you for your blood. I want us to declare right now Isaiah 53 and 5. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. In the name of Jesus. Right now, wherever you're watching this from, I want you just to begin to meditate on the truth of that word. Because right now, first of all, before we even lay out our petition, we're going to position. First, we, we positioned our focus, him. Now let's position our heart to receive. How do we do that? We just say, Lord, thank you for your blood. Thank you that you paid the price to forgive me of all of my sins. So right now, in Jesus' name, I want to declare this beautiful scripture over you. It's one of my favorites in the whole Bible. It's Psalms 139, 23, and it says this. Oh, search me, O God. And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See, God, see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Father, we thank you that right now with the blood of Jesus, you would forgive us of any sin in our lives, anything that would hinder this prayer from going forth. Now, this is important before we can ask God for what we're about to ask for. Lord, we choose to forgive anybody that has offended us, hurt us, so that we too can be forgiven right now in the name of of Jesus. Pam, would you start to hand out the communion elements? Before we ask God for anything, I want us to, like I said, position our hearts, but we are also going to remember first what he did for us. So right now, I, I ask you if you remember to go and get communion elements for this prayer meeting tonight. So if you have those, we're going to receive those right here in the onset of our prayer. We're going to receive those first as we remember. So as I read these beautiful scriptures, you get your grape juice and get your bread together and get them in your hands, all right? I want you to get your, the juice and get your bread and hold it in your hand, okay? From all over the world, you have it. You got it ready. All right. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks for it. He broke it into pieces and he said, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So before we even partake of it, Father, thank you for your body that was yes. broken for yes. us. Yes. Thank you for every stripe Hallelujah. you took yes. on your back yes. for the healing of our bodies. Yes. 
thank you that you did not call the legions of angels that would have moved at just a word and taken you out of your suffering. But Lord, thank you that your love was so great for us. You were willing to go all the way and finish the work. That we can stand here tonight and take of your body and eat of your flesh and receive the finished work of wholeness, body, soul, and spirit. We receive the broken body of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and receive the body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I believe healing is taking place right now. Healing in sick bodies right now in Jesus' name. Cancer gone in Jesus' name. Come on, cancer flushed out of your body right now. These headaches you've been having, the spirit of that, the anxiety that's causing it, the root cause broken in the name of Jesus. Spirit of infirmity broken by the blood of Jesus and the broken body, I give you praise, Father. Fibromyalgia, gone in the name of Jesus. Come on, healing comes now by the power. Hallelujah. Come on, if you, as you're being healed, comment and tell us right now. Come on, tell us what you feel in your body because many of you as we are receiving this are receiving healing right now. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper. And he said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. As you drink it, do this to remember me. He said, as often as you drink it. And for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Thank you, Father. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we receive the cup, the cup of his blood that was poured out for the remission and the forgiveness of your sins and mine. That when we confess them, they're washed as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. As we remember every drop he poured out, I declare shame is being broken off of you. Guilt is broken by the power of the blood. In Jesus' name, receive the cup. Just thank him, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, honey, right where you are. Whether you are alone or with many, just begin. Thank him right now for the power of the blood of Jesus and the broken body of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We are about to pray right now over the needs in your life. Many of you have commented your prayer request, and we have them all right here. So honey, your name is on these papers and we're about to pray over these. Before we ask for what you are believing for, I want to pray over you. Front porch friends and those of you standing with me, I want us to pray over our front porch friends right now first, okay? Because for you to be able to do tonight what you are about to do and things move in your family, I pray in Jesus' name that The one that's watching me right now, that's dealt with exhaustion and from the battle, weariness. The one that's fought this week with hopelessness that things are never seeming going to change. I declare strength over you to believe again. I declare over you in Jesus' name, encouragement where you have been discouraged. I declare over you a renewed faith that you're going to pick up your sword. You you got so tired. You just thought, if I just could lay it down a little while. But the Lord is telling you right now, you pick up that shield of faith. You pick up that sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Come on. The Lord is going to rearmor you tonight. He's going to strengthen you to stand up in the name of Jesus. I declare healing in your body, in your soul, and in your spirit, my sweet friend and intercessor. I declare that you have a supernatural strength to pray with. 
Come on, honey. Raise up your hands right now. Strength is coming in you right now to keep believing. Yes. No, you're going to finish this thing. You're not going to settle for where this is right now. You're going to finish it all the way. You've got strength in you to believe again in the name of Jesus. Father, strengthen her right now. Renew his faith to keep believing God. Give them hope. I pray, God, right now you'd send angels to invade the room where they are, God. Oh, Lord, let their room be filled with ministering angels in Jesus' mighty name, God. Send them help from heaven. Send them help from the sanctuary, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just start saying out loud, sweetheart. Say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. Come on, in Jesus' name, you receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. That's what you got to do is just receive it. Now, why do I do that? Because you matter. That's why the enemy's been trying to destroy you and fought you so hard. Because you matter that much. That's why God wanted to strengthen you tonight. Because you're the link. You're the link. You're the one that's standing in the gap that's going to bring breakthrough like no one else can. We positioned our focus. We positioned our hearts. Now we're going to position our faith. I'm holding your request. And I'm going to hold them first in my hands. And we're going to pray over every comment that came in, every request. There's a few thousand here. And honey, God knows every one of them. You weren't sending them to me. You were sending them straight to the, to heaven. It was addressed to heaven, to the throne of God. Heaven's got a copy too. <laughs> Come on. And if you think we're something you're praying, no, 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 you should hear Jesus praying for you right now. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to stretch these out, and then in a minute I'm going to hand them out to all these prayer force ladies. Believe me, they're powerful women of faith, and they're going to start calling out names. So I'm putting my hand on your request. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see every request that was sent in. And Lord, we petition heaven. Lord, here they are. They've been sent to you. And we just say, here, God, we thank you that you have them in your hands right now. Mm, they are in your eyes. They are in your ears. They are in your heart. I thank you, God, that your ear is, is able to hear. Your hand can still reach and save. Father, we declare deliverance in Jesus' name. Lord, we're going to start calling these names in a moment. We declare healing. We declare hope. We declare restoration for every prayer request. Lord, I pray for every one of them to be answered. Come on, y'all. Let's agree for that. Every one of them. Come on, sweetheart. In the name of Jesus, every one of them answered. Lord, I give you praise for this. We declare tonight's a night of miracles. Ooh, I just feel this. I believe, honey, the Bible says that angels move at the power of his word. So we're going to send his word. There's going to be angels busy tonight. There are thousands of angels busy tonight. Oh, they are moving by the power and life. We pray over these, Pam, while I am praying over over these and with them, you hand these out. And prayer force, these women that are with me, they're the ones that pray for me regularly in the ministry. So they're going to start reading them and calling them. Honey, your name is in there. So get ready. While I'm praying, they're going to be calling names and we're going to keep on. Stay with me. Stay with me. Come on. Comment below. And let us hear from you. Let us know you're there so we can go back and look. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you right now, as they are holding your prayer request, I want you, if you're praying with a group, just turn around for about, we're going to do this for about one minute. And I want you to ask somebody in the room, just tell them, say, tell me one thing that you're believing for the most. So just look around the room and, and ask somebody. Y'all look for a request on those papers and start reading those. If you're by yourself, read the comments. 
and find one prayer request. And I want everybody all over the world to start praying for somebody else first. Okay? Give me a paper, Pam. I'm going to start praying for somebody right now in Jesus' name. Come on, we're going to pray for somebody else. In the name of Jesus, first of all, I want to pray for my friend from Texas that's believing for a miracle. I declare in Jesus' name, my friend from Texas receives a miracle tonight of restoration where it looks impossible. Lord, you're the God that says nothing is too hard for you. I declare restoration of the marriage. I declare you make a way where there seems to be no way. God, in the name of Jesus, where it is broken, bring such a healing that it is stronger than ever before. God, I'm asking you for full restoration of the home tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I pray right now for Carla, for her three daughters to return from the camp of the enemy. I pray for Patricia, healing from the broke bone of her left arm in Jesus' name. I pray, God, for Marilyn and for the deliverance of Geraldo. I pray in Jesus' name for healing for Glenda's husband tonight, restoration for the family of Marissa, for Linda and for her daughter, healing for April in Jesus' name. Come on, they're calling names, and we're going to keep calling them throughout the rest of this time that we have together in the name of Jesus. Those of you that are watching right now, I want you to do this. You know what this is. This is our rope. You got your rope with you? We're about to call in some family members. So if you got your rope with you, you know what this is. Go get your rope. Stand up. If you just got a little short rope, that's fine. too. You can just hold it up. The Lord will know what it means. If you don't have a rope, just get up and walk in a big circle and declare, you are marking this territory with the blood of Jesus. I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to, I'm going to mark mine for you. I'm in for, for you. This is, I'm standing in the gap for you too. I love this. Say, Miss Karen, what are you doing? Well, for those of you who don't know, if you haven't been watching the front porch a lot, I'll tell you. Ephesians 6.10, it says this. <sighs> Pam Barnett, come here quick and look it up. Or I can look it up for you, Pam. If you read my book, you know who Pam Barnett is, don't you? She's my prayer partner. Pam, right there, hon. Right Jesus. there. Just read right I'll there. I'll just read it out of your Bible. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I think this microphone. Pam and her husband are the I care pastors of the ranch. Word. Yes, on, go ahead. Everybody receive it right now. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Did you want me go to keep on? Go on. Yes. Okay. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, we love this I part. Love this. After the battle. After the battle. After the battle. Come on, you say that at home. Come on, after, after the, the battle. battle. After the battle, you will still be standing firm. So stand, stand your ground. ground. Come yes, on, those Lord. three words right Hallelujah. there. Hallelujah. After the battle, you're going to be standing firm. Yes. So right now, stand, stand your ground. This is what Hallelujah. we do in the front porch conferences. Yes. It's what we do. It's what the front Hallelujah. porch is all about. We do what Rahab did. The spies told Rahab, the wall's coming down. Your houses could fall too, except God's going to protect your house. Because you protected us. Put the scarlet rope outside your window and get everybody you love in your house. Come on. In other words, get them under the blood. You mark your ground. You mark your ground. You mark your ground. Your world with the blood of Jesus. That's what that blood, that red rope represents. Now inside that rope tonight, we are decreeing our families. Come on, in Jesus' name. First of all, we're going to pray over our spouses and get them inside the rope. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we're going to pray over marriages. We're going to pray over marriages, over spouses. Now, Father, first of all, we pray protection over our marriages, that no weapon formed against them is going to prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, our husbands, 
as we, as we are wives, and those of you that are men that are watching right now, for your wives. We pray right now in Jesus' name. Our marriages are protected by the blood of Jesus. I pray, God, that no divorce will come near our dwelling, that you will seal our homes, protect our homes, protect our spouses, unify our hearts in the name of Jesus. Surround us in protection. We get our spouses inside right now. I want us to take a moment right now and pray over troubled marriages. Maybe you don't have a troubled marriage, but you know of someone that does. Start praying for theirs. If yours is not, you've got a good marriage and it's wonderful, start praying for somebody else's. All right? I want us to pray over this in a major way, y'all. I want you all the front porch. This is huge. I've got some people watching. They've messaged me and they're desperate for a miracle. So, Father... In Jesus' name, come on right now. Agree with me. Do what only you can do. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray over these marriages that what you have joined together, let no man put asunder. I pray, God, that every plan of the enemy against these marriages is destroyed. I pray that no weapon formed against their marriage will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against it in judgment, we condemn. We thank you, Father God. We ask you, God, deliverance for the marriage. God, deliverance from every plan of the enemy over the marriage tonight. I pray, God, that trust is restored in it. I pray love is restored in the marriage. I pray hope that it's going to change is restored, God. I pray intimacy and laughter is restored in this marriage. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise, Father. I give you. I felt today to declare this over somebody's marriage. That God would destroy the plan of the enemy to rekindle lustful flames from the past. That God would destroy every plan of the enemy within a marriage where the enemy's trying to rekindle lustful flames with someone else from their past. As I was praying over you today concerning this, I felt to come against and just, I want, I want you to agree with me. For this, there's, some, there's somebody watching right now involved with the temptation of a Facebook relationship. It's the plan of the enemy to destroy your life. The Lord said that there's somebody that's watching that's, that, that the enemy's trying to come in with a workplace relationship. It seems innocent because it's just, it's even actually in a Christian environment, but it's a workplace relationship, but it is an unholy union of, of, of friendship. This is a plan of the enemy. So the Lord told me to come against that. I want you to agree with me right now. Come on. If it has nothing to do with you, pray for the one it has to do with. Come on. Come on, front porch friends. We pray for marriages all over the world, that every plan of the enemy against their home is brought to nothing. I pray, God, that that every wrong soul tie is broken in the name of Jesus, these soul ties of friendships from the past. I pray, God, they would run from it. I pray that they will run from it. They will flee from this temptation. And the enemy's plan is revealed and destroyed. And Jesus prevails over this marriage. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. The Lord spoke to me and told me to tell you, somebody that's watching right now, your marriage is in the tomb. It appears dead, but like Martha, we are to decree this prayer force, that even now, God is going to give us whatever we ask. Those of you that your marriage looks like it's already dead, the tomb and the stone's in front of it. The Lord says, even now, inside the tomb, God says, anything can live if you have faith to believe, Martha. Come on. Even now, even now, even now, we speak to the marriage to come forth. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Anyone that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, come on. Oh, in Jesus' name. Y'all agree with me. In Jesus' name, I speak life to the marriage. I speak life, 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 life. We speak to the marriage. We say, come forth. Come forth. Come forth and live in Jesus.
Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are the resurrection and the life. You are, you are, you are. There's nothing too hard for you, nothing too dead for you. You live, God, and the marriage lives in you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, shout. Hallelujah. 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 Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, I just feel victory. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh. Somebody get the stone rolled away and get ready to loose them and let that marriage go. Come on. Get those grave clothes off. Get the grave clothes off. Loose them, loose it, loose it, loose it. Let it go, let it go, let it go. And come on, I feel a victory dance. Somebody start dancing. Get up off the couch and start dancing. Go, go, go. Come on, honey, by faith, just get up off the couch. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, you. Martha didn't just stand there and stare. Come on, Martha didn't just stand there and act like she was dead. No, she was rejoicing. Oh, come on, when Lazarus came out, she was rejoicing. You need to rejoice because what was dead is going to live again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's pray for children. We're going to get our children in this circle right here. Going to get them in the blood, covered in the blood. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, honey. If you want to get up off the couch and start walking around in a circle, do it to just mark your ground. Because you're going to get your, got your spouse in here if you got one. You got your, you got to get your kids in here. If you don't have children, start praying for somebody else's. Come on, you know somebody. Yeah. Glory to God. We're going to get our kids in. How do you do that? Get them, start calling them by name. Y'all start calling the names on that paper. Yeah. Go ahead, get your papers and start calling them. We're going to get, you start calling them, go. At home. That's right, call them out loud. Start walking in a circle in your house. Get your kids in the circle. Come on, get them in the round blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get those kids in there. Come on. Come on. I don't care if people think we're crazy. I'm not doing this to impress people. Come on, in the name of Jesus. There's a job to do. First of all, we declare of Isaiah 40, 54, 13. All of my children will be taught of the Lord, and great will be the peace of my children. Come on, say it out loud with me, honey. Speak it to your children right now. Say, all of my children. Come on, all of them, all of them. Come on, all. Not one, two, or half. All. Not leaving out one. Not okay with one being gone. All of my children will be taught of the Lord, and great will be the peace of my children. <coughs> I declare Proverbs 18, 24. That says, there's a love that sticks closer than a brother. I declare my children know the love of God, and they love each other. Come on, siblings, my children, the brothers, the boys and the girls, my, my children, the sons and the daughters. They love each other deeper, deeper than even siblings because they love with 1 Corinthians 13. There's a love that sticks closer than a brother. My children love each other. My children don't just argue and fight. My children love each other. Oh, blessed be the name. I declare in your house right now, in Jesus' name, your house is going to be filled with peace and no more strife. Oh, come on right now, mother, dad. Agree with me for this right now. That spirit of strife that tries to come in when your kids come over. In Jesus' name, we break that spirit. We declare it comes down in the name of Jesus. We declare peace over your children. They have peace between each other. They love each other. Restoration over them in every way. In Jesus' name. I declare Ephesians 6, 1, your children are going to honor their fathers and their mothers that their yes. days will be long upon the earth yes. and it will be well with them. Yes. I declare your children are going to honor you and love you, Mom. They're going to honor you and love you, Dad. It's for their good that their days will be long and it will go well with them. I declare honor in your house is restored. And Mama, I declare you're healed from every word of the past. I declare healing in you. You will so forgive that you can receive the honor that's about to come your way. God will so heal the wound that you won't even remember it anymore. It's going to be overwhelmed with love in Jesus' name. Honor, double honor is coming back to you. 
I declare 3 John 1, 4, your children, my children, are going to walk in truth, for I have no greater joy than to know my children walk in truth. Come on, 1 John 1, 4, I declare your children walk in truth. They will not walk in deception. I declare Psalms 91, 11, that the, your children are protective, body, soul, and spirit. Come on, hon, right now, go. Say, say it out loud. Say, my children are protected. That's right. For he gives his angels charge over you to bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. Lord, I thank you that angels protect them in the car. They protect them wherever they're traveling. They protect them in the home. They protect them when they're with other kids. They protect them. Angels protecting your children. Declare that with me right now. Say, angels. God, angels are protecting my children. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. I declare your children will be kept from the world. I declare your children will be burning ones. I declare your children will be those who prophesy as sons and daughters in the last days. And I declare your children will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, we're going to call home some prodigals. You ready? Come on. We've just got a little more time left, but I want us to, this is very important. Mother, get ready, and Daddy, get ready. We're going to call some prodigals home tonight. Hallelujah. You ready to do this? Thank you, Jesus. Anybody on the porch ever had a son or a daughter that was a prodigal that went right with God? Return, wave at me. Just wave at me. I see you. I see you. We've got witnesses up here that God answers prayer, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> I'm the biggest one of all. <laughs> Come on, as you were preparing to pray for these prodigals. I want to read you a scripture really quick. It's in Luke, the 15th chapter. And it says this. The prodigal son packed all of his belongings and he moved to a distant land. And he wasted all of his money in wild living. Just like your child has done. But about the time his money ran out, he began to starve. A great famine had swept over the land. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. And the young man became so hungry, so hungry, so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Just, it was important that that young man stay hungry, or he would have grown accustomed to the pig pen. He needed to get hungry. That's why no one gave him anything. Sometimes it's best not to give him anything when you're just feeding the place of their bondage. Don't feed the place of their bondage. Don't support the place of their bondage. Verse 17, when he finally came to his senses, that's what we're about to pray tonight, he said to himself, I will go home. I will go home unto my father and ask my father to forgive me. And you know the rest of that. He returned home to his father. And while he was afar off, the father saw him coming. And the father ran because fathers and mothers of faith keep their eye on the road, watching the road. Thank you, Spirit of God. I want you to get ready. Are you ready to pray? I declare right now in Jesus' name, Lord, Go get our prodigals tonight. Right now, wherever you're watching me from, begin to call their name out loud. Jesus, go get the prodigals in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that tonight, wherever they are, call their name, mother, dad, go. Call their name out loud. In the name of Jesus, go get them. Spirit of God, draw them to truth. And Lord, if you have to, take them to the pig pen. I don't want him to have to go there. And if you can do it without it, then do it without it. But Lord, if it takes it, if it takes the pig pen, get him to the pig pen. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that tonight 
you will let the pigs deceive them no more and let the husk satisfy them no longer. Make them hungry, God. I pray the prodigals tonight are hungry for righteousness. I pray the things of this world will become disgusting to them and they would know how empty this world is, God. That they would remember what was in the house of their father, their father God. They would remember the peace that they knew and as a child in his presence, God. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that our prodigal son, the prodigal son will come to his senses. The prodigal daughter will come to her senses. And like Saul, let scales fall from their eyes in Jesus' name. Oh, go get them tonight, God. Oh, by your spirit, Lord, make them miserable in sin. Make them miserable in sin in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Come on, sweetheart, get your feather out. Get your feather out. The Lord told me when my product, when my daughter was a prodigal, she's not anymore, but when she was, he said to me, he said, like a feather, easy as a feather, and every wall comes crashing down. Come on, that wall that's been separating your child from truth and love. Come on, you let the Spirit of God just get in that feather tonight. Let the Lord show you how easy it is for him. Wave your feather right now in Jesus' name. Come on, this is the way it works in the kingdom. Come on, the things that look foolish become a weapon in the hands of God. So we declare in Jesus' name. Oh, 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 oh. Father God, as easy as a feather till every wall of deception is crumbling right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, honey. If you've got your Play-Doh, let's just decree right now the Play-Doh. Leslie, go look up right now. Quick. Go look up Ezekiel eleven nineteen. Come on, Father, in Jesus' name. God, we praise you that every wall is crumbling right now. Come on. Let the wall come down by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name. I want to decree 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing, exalting itself against the knowledge of God. Right now, these, these feathers are like weapons in the hand of God, bringing down and casting down the strongholds of the enemy, the high things exalting themselves against the knowledge of God in Jesus' name. Leslie, come over here by me, honey, in the light and read and get your Play-Doh out right now. I know, I know if some people are watching. You can laugh if you want to. It doesn't matter to me one iota. I'm telling you all that matters to me is that we get breakthrough for some prodigal sons and daughters tonight. What are you doing, Karen? It's just a little symbol of faith. It's just something that we do to give us, just to increase our faith. That's right. It's not some icon or something we worship. It's just there's only one we worship. We take his word, and we just do things that just increase like a symbol of our faith. Read this for the Plato. Ezekiel eleven nineteen. That's right. Ezekiel eleven nineteen, and I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove their heart of stone from their bodies and I will give them a heart of flesh so that they may follow my statutes and keep my ordinances and practice them. Then they will be my people and I will be their God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm going to give you Hallelujah. some of my Play-Doh, Leslie. Yes. Honey, take that microphone. I'll take the Bible. And you, <laughs> you take this Play-Doh in your hand. You say, why the Play-Doh, Karen? Because when my daughter was a prodigal, I used to take, I went and bought some Play-Doh that just represented a soft white heart mm. because her heart seemed so hard and stony and hard. And it just seemed like it was just filled with such sin. I just thought, well, white will represent the purity of a clean heart. So I'm just going to declare that her heart is soft and pliable and tender instead of being hard and stony and rebellious. And I used that verse that Leslie just read. And I would walk down the road behind my house and just squeeze this in my hand and declare this was the heart of my daughter before God. And Leslie, I want you to pray over the prodigals that have, that have stony, hard hearts, that God makes them tender. Yes, Lord, we pray over 
all the watch, all the viewers right now and their daughters and their sons and even their husbands, all of their prodigals and grandchildren. And we say right now in the name of Jesus, come come and soften Holy Spirit, soften their hearts, soften their hearts, make it pliable in your hands. Holy Spirit, move on their heart and soften it and remove that stony heart, remove that stony heart and bring down those walls in the name of Jesus and make their precious hearts their precious oh they're your children they're not just ours they're your children and you want their hearts soft before you in Jesus name in Jesus name now we decree right now according to 2nd Corinthians the 5th chapter and the 20th verse that says this in fact just turn there just find that for me Pam And while you're finding it, I want you to agree with me for this over prodigals. Listen to me good while Pam's looking for this verse. Give me your full attention. In firm agreement, we stand before God. We say, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that their identity would be revealed from God and not the world. They are who you have made them to be. And I declare their identity will never be stolen by the lies of the enemy. Because the enemy is after their authority, which is found in their identity. So, God, I pray right now they will know the man of God you've called them to be, the woman of God that you have called them to be, who you formed and created in their mother's womb. Lord, I declare their identity is revealed by God himself, the one who made them and watched them and protected them. I declare sexual perversion is broken off of their life, that they would know how loved and precious they are before God, and they would know the better way that you have for them. In Jesus' name, come on, agree with me for that, mother, that this sexual perversion is broken. They are free to know who they are and how beautiful God has made them be. In Jesus' name, we declare every wrong relationship and influence is broken. We declare right relationships and influences come and come quickly. We declare right now the broken, the breaking over wrong friendships and voices that are speaking to them that right voices speak now in the name of Jesus. Come on, one more thing we're going to decree over these prodigals. Pam, I want you to give me this scripture right here. I want you to say it, Pam. You say it out loud. Okay. You know, I kind of got overwhelmed with how God has pulled us in to have such authority as we pray. It's really kind of mind-blowing, isn't it? When we read this verse, we see there's so much authority that he has given us over this. So I'm just reading that with an humble heart right now of just what God is doing. And it says this, so we are Christ ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Honey, we're not making this up. This is in the Bible. Oh, we are yes. God's ambassadors. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Go look it up. Second Corinthians 5 and 20. Go start with 518. So what are we going to do? When my daughter Lindsay was gone, I've told you this many times. We're going to tell you right here because we're about to do it. I would not only pray with a Play-Doh in my hand and a feather sometimes, I would come on this very porch. She lived over an hour away, and I took that verse literally, and I would just declare with everything I had in my being. I yelled it as loud as I could yell it. I'd probably break my microphone right now, but I would yell it. Lindsay, come back to God with everything I had in me because there's no distance in the spirit realm. And Isaiah 55 said, when his word proceeds out of his mouth, which is the same word as in our mouth, when his word goes forth, it does not come back void. It's going to come back with what it's beset to accomplish. We're going to call him home. So I want you right now with the whippoorwill singing, I want you to call your child home with me. Will you do that? So I want you, I'm going to go to this world where I'm on the porch and I want you to start calling their name. I want you to give me, give me some of those papers. I'm going to start calling some names home. And a, my, my uh, prayer force is going to line up. I want y'all to line up and face that way. Take these papers and we're going to take about 10 seconds and we're just going to start calling kids home. Are you ready? Now, wherever you're watching us from, you start calling them from where you are. Come on. 
don't, don't be worried about what people think. Go outside where nobody can see you, and even if they do, who cares? Who cares? Like I care. I don't. Come on. Come on. Let's go call, home. Let's go call them home. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, on the count of three, I'm going to say three. When I do, you call their name and say, come back to God. Now, prayer force, do it with everything you've got. Front porch friend, do it with everything you've got. We're going to speak the word like God gave it. We're going to speak the word, and God's going to do it. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Come on. Let's go. Doug, come back to God. Lindsay. To God in Jesus' name. Kayla, come back to God in Jesus' name. Oh, I declare grandchildren are coming back to God in Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. I declare Jalen, come back to God. Christopher, come back to God. Benjamin, come back to God. Judith, come back to God. Come back to God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we decree it right now. Natasha, come back to God. Amanda, come back to God in Jesus' name. Come on, come on. Christopher, come back to God. Jalen, come back to God. Judy, Judy, Meredith, come back to God in Jesus' name. Come back to God. Come on. Now, front porch friend, wherever you're watching this from right now, as they're calling those names, you call the name of your loved one. Go on. Call it out. Call it out of the Spirit because it will not return void. It accomplishes what it was supposed to to accomplish in Jesus' name. Ladies, will y'all lift up a shout of victory right now? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Not only for our children, but I declare it also to, to uh, daughters-in-law and sons-in-law. Ruth 1.16, you're not going to have strife between your daughter-in-law and you. You're not, that's not accepted. That's not the will of God. You don't have to have that. So you don't have to have it between you and your son-in-law. So in Jesus' name, we declare Ruth 1.16 over you and your, your daughter-in-law and son-in-law. That whether thou goest, I will go. Whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. I declare peace and restoration for you and for your children in Jesus' mighty name. Brad, tell me what time it is. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We're going to do one more thing tonight before we close. I want us to pray over cities and our nation. You know, this is such a huge thing to me because I feel like, be looking up, uh, one of you over there, be looking up Psalms 122, 6 through 9, if you'll do that for me, please. Uh, just be looking that up for me quickly. I feel like the dream that Chase had that we talked about was so significant for our nation. Oh, the sky just lit up. I want y'all to, what? Is it a rainbow? What? Are you kidding? Where? Oh, my heavens. Yes, I see it. Oh, y'all, there's a rainbow. There's a rainbow. There's a rainbow. Come on. Thank you, God. Y'all, that is, what about God? Please, somebody come and talk to me. What about God? Here we are. Y'all, this sky has just like heaven has lit it up. Y'all, tell them, is that the truth? Yes. This sky has it's just literally so lit up. And now it's light. Angels are on the move. Angels, angels are on the move. That's why the sky is lit up. I just, I'm blown away. You're just going to have to stay with me. Thank you, Jesus. That's the power of the word, y'all. His word is alive. It's living. And in his word, there is no darkness. And it was actually getting quite dark. And all of a sudden, the lights of heaven have turned on. God is moving on your behalf. He is moving on your behalf. God wants to move on behalf of our nation. You know, Chase's dream, I was saying that Chase's dream 
said that a storm was coming and another wave was coming. And I believe that involves our nations. The nation you are from, we are in America. There's people watching from Ireland and many other nations in, in South Africa and many of you are watching from, from different places in Europe and Australia. Wherever you are from, we are all being affected by basically a global storm in many, many different ways, whether it's the economy, whether it's been uh, the virus, whether or not it's been uh, war. It's just, it's, a, it's an unusual day and we all know it. But we've got to stand up as intercessors. We can make a difference. So I want to ask you tonight that even before we pray over our nation and before we pray over the nation, the people, and the land that we love, let's first pray over the nation, the land, and the people he loves. Let's pray over Israel. Amen. That's his land. That was his people. That is his people. That's the place he grew up when he was on earth. And it's the place he loves. So who looked up my scripture for me? Come here, sweetheart, and read it. This is how we're going to pray first. Before we pray over our land, we'll pray over his. Go ahead. Verse 6. Yes, I believe that's right. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that it says, for the sake of my family and the sake of my people, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. saying, Lord, I pray for your people. So, of course, we're all God's people. We know that. But he has covenants and promises for the land of Israel and the Jewish people that he has not forgotten and he never will. So, Father, first of all, we pray for the peace. Come on, y'all. We agree. Come on. Join with me. Come on. We pray for the peace and prosperity of Jerusalem. We pray for the protection of that nation of Israel. I thank you, God, that every promise you have made over that nation, over that land, and over those people, you have not forgotten. You remember your covenant with Abraham. You remember your covenants with David. You remember, God, and you will never forget. And I thank you, Lord. It was an everlasting covenant. And I pray, God, your blessing and your protection and your increase over the land of Israel and the Jewish people. That, Lord, that, that the revelation of your light and your love and your Messiah, Jesus Christ, would be revealed to them. Father, supernaturally, a great wave and a move of God and a, the spirit of, of, of revival and awakening would sweep through Israel. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord, and we say amen. Now, I want us to pray right now over our nation, the nation you are from. Psalms 33:22 says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. 1 Timothy 2 and 1 through 2 says, Pray for the kings and all who are in authority so that we can lead a quiet and a peaceable life. Yes. It's God's will that we pray over our kings, over our presidents, no matter who they are. He didn't say if they're in the party you like or if they're, they, you agree with everything about them. He just said pray for them. Mm -hmm. So as men and women of God, yes. we pray for the leaders of our nations. So wherever you're watching this from, the nation you are in, right now you start calling the name of your leaders. Will you do that? Come on, start praying over the capital that, that is in your nation. Pray over the city. For us, it's Washington, D.C. Come on, so we will pray over Washington. You pray over the city that you or the nation that you are in. Father, in Jesus' name, according to your word, as intercessors, we stand praying for this nation. Praying, God, for the nations of the earth, for you love them all. all. All, all equally just the same. But we also, those of you that have planted, that you've planted in America, God, we pray over this city, over this nation and even over the city of Washington, D.C. Father, as you have given us the Washington Post, it's, it's a spiritual word that you've called us to be watchmen over Washington, D.C. So God, we pray over Washington, D.C. that your kingdom will come. Come on. That your will would be done over Washington, D.C., over the president, over the vice president, over the Senate, over Congress, over the Supreme Court, over all of our leaders. <coughs> God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. We pray, God, that, that this, we declare that this nation, as you have said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, that you would be exalted. Let God arise over America and the nations represented now. Let God arise 
arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise over Washington, D.C. Oh, God, I pray that, that evil and darkness will be brought down. Confusion will be brought down. And, God, I pray truth be established and righteousness be established. Righteousness be established. Let righteous leaders be established. Let righteousness be exalted. God, that your kingdom will come of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost over America in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you praise, Father. In Jesus' name. One more thing I want us to do for the nations. You know, many times in the Bible you will find that when a nation or a city f fell into sin or idolatry, they opened themselves up to judgment and ultimately death. But it was not God's will that that happened. It was the law of God and sin. Sin will always bring about death, as we said in the beginning. But Ezekiel 22, 30 said, once, one time when Israel had sinned, God was just looking for somebody. He said, I looked for a man that would stand in the gap so that I wouldn't destroy the land, but I couldn't find anyone, and the land was destroyed. But there was another time in Genesis 18 when Sodom and Gomorrah had so sinned, the Bible says that God said, the cry of sin has risen before me so loud that I'm going to destroy it all. But he first said, but I can't do it till I talk to my friend that I found. He found a man named Abraham that he called his friend. And Abraham became an intercessor for Sodom. And they, they negotiated the situation till Abraham said, if you just find 10 righteous, would you spare the city? And God had said, yes, I will, Abraham. But there was not 10 righteous. But God was willing to get Abraham's nephew out mm -hmm. because Abraham, God knew that Abraham was like, God, don't you destroy it till I get my nephew. Mm -hmm. So God got his nephew out. Yes. When Exodus 32, Moses stood as the intercessor before God destroyed Israel. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, oh God, don't do it. Even though God against you. And he interceded. And the Bible says you can look it up for yourself. Exodus 32. The Bible says, and so God changed his mind. God changed his mind. <laughs> it's mind-boggling that an intercessor, a friend of God, can change the mind of God. Because what happened is, what happened, there's many, many times the Bible says that, even when Jonah, the Bible says that when Nineveh prayed and repented, quote, unquote, in the Bible, and so God changed his mind about their destruction when they repented. Come on, that's the power of intercession. That's why tonight matters. That's why it matters to pray for America and the nation you're from. Because America has sown sin. And the sound and the smell of sin has risen before God. We have slaughtered the innocent. There's innocent, the blood of the babies, the blood of the, the innocent. We have slaughtered them for, for now many, many years. And the sound and the smell of, of that has come up before God. But now intercessors stand. Because here, listen to me very good, my sweet friend. Abraham and Moses, being his friend, found out a little secret about his heart. The more they tapped into the heart of God, they found mercy triumphs over judgment. So tonight on this front porch, I want us to do one more thing before we close tonight. I want you to stand up from wherever you're watching this from, okay? Come on. And this guy now is turning red, which is pretty interesting. Because we're going to plead the blood of Jesus over our nation. Come on. Which camera is on me? Can you turn it with me? Front porch friends, I want you to come and stretch your hands out right now over this nation. Come on, sweetheart. You do this with me from wherever you're watching me from to your nation. Come on, stretch it out. We're going to stand as Moses did and as Abraham did. We're going to stand as they stood. And come on, they stood as intercessors between judgment and mercy. This is the Father's house. And right now, we're just going to pray right now that judgment, the hand, of, that, 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 the hand of judgment is stayed right now. And we're going to appeal to God for mercy. Come on, let's do that right now. Father, I thank you that we know that judgment, that, that your mercy triumphs over judgment. Come on, y'all, lift up your voices pray right now. You help me pray, honey. Father, over America and over all the nations that are represented right now watching. 
We ask you, God, in Jesus' name, to stay the hand of judgment. We know that a storm has come to our nation and the nations of the earth. But your intercessors are here, God. If you're looking for friends, if you're looking for a man or a woman to stand in the gap, in 2022, you won't have to say, I looked, but I couldn't find anybody. No, God. No, God. Because right here on the front porch, your front porch friends are here. And we are saying, God, spare the nation. Lord, let mercy be poured out over America and the nations represented here, God. Lord, I pray for revival instead of judgment. I pray, God, for awakening, awakening in America. Send awakening, send repentance, God. Oh, Father, I pray for awakening that would shake this nation to its core. Cause people, God, to be awakened to the reality of who you are. I pray scales fall from their eyes. I pray the spirit of conviction grip their heart. I pray for repentance to stir their heart again, Lord. I pray you would shake everything that can be shaken. God, even in the church, come on, y'all, help me pray. Help me pray. God, in the church, shake everything. Oh, from the pulpit to the pew, shake it all, God. Everything that can be shaken. Oh, till only your spirit remains, God. Raise up intercessors. Raise up bold ones. Raise up people who won't care to be mocked. Raise up people who won't care to be laughed at. Raise up people who won't care when they're misunderstood. Raise up people, God, who won't care when friends or family separate themselves because of their stand for righteousness. Give them boldness, God. Give them boldness, God. In Jesus' name, God, save America and save the nations that they're praying from right now all over the world in Jesus name your intercessors are here God we know you've heard the sound of sin from America but we ask you for a great move of God and a great place of mercy go get our kids Lord pull them out of this storm go get our kids go get our family protect them and deliver them in Jesus mighty name oh God we are seeking you now for the great moving of your spirit in Jesus mighty name thank you Father Thank you. Last thing we're going to do tonight is, if you will, I want you to go get your victory flag, and I want you to go get your crown. Am I on right here? <laughs> if you know my story, I don't have time to tell it. But if you know my story, when my daughter Lindsay was gone, before she's fully home now, I prayed with this crown on right here. I wore this crown because it's the one I won when I was, I think, 10 or 11 years old. At the Church of God of Prophecy Youth Camp in Camp Booth, in Camp Booth, Al in Alabama, and I was Queen of Youth Camp that year. <laughs> I didn't win Miss America, but I won Queen of Youth Camp. <laughs> crown looks a little worn. It's been through some battles now, but I would pray and put this crown on because God gave me a promise: when the battle is over, you will wear the crown, and when the battle is over you will still be standing firm. That's what he says in Ephesians 6. Honey, when this battle is over, you will be standing firm because you've kept your faith and you've never let go. You are going to win this battle because of the word of God inside of your mouth and heart. Get your victory flag because whenever we close right now in prayer, we're going to give God praise. Come on, all my front porch friends that are up on the porch with me, y'all come over here. Can somebody move this stand? We're just going to stand here and give God a, a shout of victory and praise. I love to, to wear this crown because it was like my way of, it, it wasn't just, just for me. It wasn't even just, <laughs> Pam, look at your crowns. I love them. The humidity is, <laughs> the humidity is kind of made them all. Okay. Yeah. Okay, y'all come on over here. Come on over here. Come on. We've all got our crowns on. You know why we do this? Which camera's on me? Okay, you know why we do this? Because, number one, it gives us faith that we've won. Yeah. And number two, I like to wear it before the Lord to let the Lord know I believe I've won. Yeah. And number three, I like to wear it so the devil knows. You lost. I've won. Even, come on, even if it's not manifested yet, that's okay. It's already done in the spirit realm. 
because we prayed and God heard and God answers. So tonight in Jesus' name, I want us to wave our victory flags. Come on, sweetheart, wave your flag, wave whatever. You've got to get a bath cloth if you've got to. But get something in your hand, start waving it to declare, I've won, I've won, I've won, I've won. Jesus won in Jesus' name. The victory has been won. The victory has been won. Jesus has prevailed. Jesus has prevailed. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise we love Jesus. you. We love you. And the victory tonight is yours. Oh, our sweet front porch friends, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for praying. God heard our prayers. God's going to answer our prayers. Would you please comment? We would just want to read them. We can go look. We'll go look and find you. Your, your comments let us know you're there. It's our point of agreement until we can see each other again someday eternally. We're in this with you all the way my dear front porch friend keep standing strong in jesus name we'll see you again wednesday night until then i love you good night everybody